Hello and Ramadan Karim to our Muslim brothers and sisters. I pray this season brings us peace. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time where we analyze some of the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and to do the analyzing and talking with me, I've got my very interesting co-anchors Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshokeye. Good Hello. morning. Happy Ramadan doing? Karim. Mm. Happy Ramadan Karim to you too. Someone told me you don't say happy when you're saying Ramadan Karim. You either say happy Ramadan or you say Ramadan Karim. Oh. Okay, let's take that again. <laughs> <laughs> Ramadan Karim. <laughs> so. Yeah, I hope they have a good one despite the lockdown mm -hmm. and you know they can still practice yeah. that. Um, I feel for people celebrating their birthdays in this lockdown. Oh, you, you're a victim. Sorry. We were victims. Oh, you were victims. Mm. Sorry. It's okay. You know, just be careful. We don't know your birthday is, but you could just be. be no, part of that I, come on, it's still the God forbid. This it's in our beat. This one is a prayer. <laughs> this thing now, like. <laughs> Um, moving on to the very important stories we have to discuss. Beyonce's Big Good Initiative has announced that it is pledging $6 million in funding to support organizations that tackle the mental health toll stemming from coronavirus disease on communities and essential workers in particular. In a statement, the organization announced that it is partnering with UCLA and Twitter CEO Jack Drozzi's Start Small efforts to provide this $6 million to organizations providing mental health um, wellness services. Baygood also will partner with um, the National Alliance on Mental Health to provide local support in Houston, Houston, New York, New Orleans, and Detroit. Big one, big shout out to Beyonce for this one. But um, I need to have a big name so that when we're collectively making a donation, they'll say Ife is donating six million naira because this is in partnership with ucla and the jack dorsey twitter thing but when i saw it i was like is beyonce mm, but going no, to no, her initiative is donating not, six million dollars yeah. then but she has decided to make that funding work in partnership with, with other um, start people. small jack dorsey and others. but so, they said they will be together so that six million is from beyonce it's from beyonce yeah. so they will but raise the way more. that is oh, executed nice. yeah. is like through other things because the whole idea of this is to it's really brilliant um, mm -hmm. the whole idea is to um, oh, focus on workers. the mental health of the of the um, medical workers in line of COVID-19 um, so it's very specific mm. and the execution of that looks very different so now they're partnering with UCLA it's interesting that they're partnering with UCLA as well because UCLA was one of the black first black um, universities in um, America and because of that they had traumatic obviously black people experience and everything they're one of the first universities to really focus on mental health and everything so it's Amazing. like it's so brilliant and then you have um, someone like um, the Twitter guy Jack who, Darcy. Darcy. Yeah, who has also Stats been like more. his thoughts more has always um, picked um, cases that were so unique and I don't things really differently and have a uh, I guess a a good record of like executing um, initiatives like this really well so I feel like this is going to really be an effective initiative and kudos to Beyonce mm -hmm. I mean there's everything about her just it's some like if you say role model I don't want to bring the story back but if you say like oh young girls are looking okay. <laughs> and Elsie's face I know where you're going but, but you know if you test me on that black <laughs> that you know women of color look at Beyonce as someone as a role model I get that like okay. this is someone that you want I, I don't mind you copying every single thing that she does because I feel like she tries her, her best to, in the best in the human way possible I'm not saying she's perfect and just really tries to kill it all the time in everything mm. and I, I, I appreciate it I could go like if I oh my has said this is an amazing mm. initiative <laughs> is um, kudos one. to Beyonce and the Big Good initiative and of course mental health is highly important yeah. I remember was it early this week that <laughs> we are all shaking to yeah. our roots when the numbers kept rising and I think I was clear on this table when I said I knew I wasn't feeling excellence and I, I had to talk to someone and all that so it is important that we take our mental health serious at this point and also for those in um, in front in the front line, I mean, they are facing it and seeing the deaths and seeing the changes. So it is highly important um, for this to be done. And thank and you. And I BLC. think when things are smoother for the health workers, it will be easier for them to help people because there was a story that broke yesterday about how a woman died because she had respiratory issues for years and it wasn't related to COVID nineteen. But they took her to the hospital and the moment they saw and it was similar to the symptoms of COVID nineteen, no doctor attended to her 
were no nurse attended to her. In fact, they disappeared and she died. Mm. Do you understand? That's so sad. there are people that are actually having real respiratory... I said real, like COVID is not. <laughs> they're actually having respiratory issues that are not... They're not in, linked inclined with COVID-19. COVID yeah. So let's just make sure that we still lend a helping hand to such people. Um, let's go on a very quick break, but when we come back, we have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? Oh, I'm feeling good. No time to die. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. As you're doing giveaway, make sure your mom is not outside queuing for COVID-19 emergency rides. Help as much as you can, but charity begins at home. Send money to your family. You see that auntie that's always calling, send her money. That cousin, send him or her money. Help your extended family. Times are hard. Don't be a hero in the streets and your family members are begging. And this is coming from Nollywood actress Sharon Oja. You guys should go on. Um, <laughs> it's loud. Go. It's very loud. Um, I actually never thought that it was possible until I met um, if fam I met the family of someone I used to adore. Oh, Paul, very possible. Um, like, I, I thought that the man was. Um, he had hotels. He was brilliant. He was so into my personal growth, and he used to like invest. Like he was a mentor when I was really younger. Um, and I think just by being obsessed with him, I was staying around his him so much that I started to meet his family, and I became close to his, his daughter. And she asked me for credit, and I was just like, "Huh, what?" That time he's like investing big in my like my dreams Education. and stuff. So we started talking and everything, and I realized that he actually doesn't give this girl or her family money that they share and like really really stingy. And he's Is he's girl, really his rich. Daughter, or he's, just extended his, family. his daughter. Okay. They're twins actually, and then. So yeah, there's a lot of like all, all that, that type of case and I, I didn't want to believe it before and then I started talking to like other people and like staffs and everything and they're like, yeah, he doesn't actually look out for his family or care for his family. That was the first time I actually got in, in contact with something like that and then going over time, I started realizing that it's a lot of them. Now, I, I don't want to sound, mm, don't take it offensive, but in my personal experience, a lot of them have been, have been Igbos. And I don't know if that has something to do with them being strict with their family. Like, I don't understand it, but there's quite a lot of people who would help others and really just, like, neglect their families, which is wrong, obviously. Okay. I mean, this story did not come as a surprise. Or when she puts what she put out, it, it, it didn't come as a surprise because I know... I, in fact, I have tweeted something similar, but not during this period because I'm careful about what I say now because I don't think anybody is really mandated to help mm. anybody right now. Whatever we're doing sure. now is from the bottom of our hearts because nobody planned for COVID-19. Do you understand? Period. Yes, like you said. <laughs> it is, really. <laughs> but um, on this case, there are so many people, I just want to restrict it to her online conversation she's talking about. There's so many people doing giveaways back to back. Let's even forget and about family and extended like. families because you don't know how somebody might have hurt them or mm. treated them when they were growing up mm. or, you know, and they, they feel did. like, you know what, I'm just going to stay away from yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. But your friend is in need. Mm. Buzzes you up and say, Gaia beg. But you're comfortable because of the clout and you will trend, you rather do the tweeting, give away recharge card, give away money, just to do what to make you feel good. At the end of the day, I know you first said yesterday we need to feel good, right? But I think if you cannot take care of the people around you to the best of your capability, then whatever you do online is just hypocrisy as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah, and I totally agree. If the people around you cannot really feel your impact or your presence, then it's better dead than alive because the people you're doing 
um, the clout and giveaway. They don't even know you personally. So, and I feel the people that should really feel your impact, if the people around you can feel your impact, then it will be easier to extend to people that do not even know you. So, I think you should start with your immediate environment. Charity so, begins at yeah, home. Yeah, charity begins at home. So, if you start with your immediate environment, which is family, which is friends, which is neighbors, and you understand, yeah. like, those are the people that right now, first look out for them before you say, oh, I'm going to community Z, start with community A, B, mm. and C. People Do you understand? Yeah, people around you. I think that's how it should be. There was a um, there was a tweet I saw. I don't know how true this is, but there's a celebrity who's gone with her um, foundation to really like give her, which is good. But then the house girl uh, um, is living with her, and that person has family outside, so she's fine because she's living with the celebrity. But then that that person's family is like suffering in the village and everything, mm. and she's asked, and then they. Refused. I think that's a very good example of what mm -hmm. you're trying to say. Where, like, yeah, th have you actually looked around? And maybe, some, maybe she, the house girl, hasn't told her. There's a lot of other yeah. things. But have you actually taken out the effort to really look around you? Like the lady that comes to clean your house, or like the driver that calls and um, drives your car. Like, mm -hmm. have you looked around first before you go? Outside? Again, looking at the online side, I just want to look at it from another angle, just to balance the equation. There are people who, for now, what they do online is more like their investment in their business. Mm. So their Twitter page is what gives them money. And they feel like they need to put, they need to keep their interaction at a certain level to mm. make sure brands or any other person that is not interested in your personality and just want to look at the engagement would make sure they get, so they have like a budget for giveaways every month. So that kind of person, if you come to the person and say, give him money, the person might not be able to give you, sure. but the 100K budget of giving away monthly is constant and it's now like business for them. So mm. I know it's, we can, we are, we've said all we need to say, mm. but let's just think and for every, anybody watching us or that will listen to us later on, should just make sure that it is balanced for you. As long mm. as you know within you, they are doing the right thing and this is right, then I think that's fine. Okay, so Chama um, is advising women. She says many women lose their um, many women lose their senses while waiting for one man to come to his. Stop wasting your time. And this Chama Roland is the person we like to call, aka Davido's fiance. Mm. <laughs> I've never really heard her say, say anything. Much. Yeah, she's not the same type. Um, and this was not what you were expecting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, it, I, I would. Mm. I don't want to be too harsh, but I feel like her, her voice, she has a Just voice, she cannot harsh. deny. I don't think you can survive I without know, being right? <laughs> I know, like, I understand that. I, I think she should know by now that she does have a voice, yeah. you know? And for somebody who clearly is, restri is restricting herself from using social media, I would have thought that there'd be a lot more juice to her. There'd be a lot more intention when she decides to. Exactly. This conversation this conversation she's trying to start first of all is so flimsy um and it's so like disconnected to her situation so i i wonder it, it's like i was just irritated by by this i didn't know how to react when you to, say disconnected to a situation you mean what she's going through personally or i mean how can you relate kind of, this to the life of trauma yeah you don't know a personal life uh -huh. it's what we see that we, we know see. that she's she's engaged to david doe with the yeah, baby but you don't know the Type she's of waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know video. about her friends. What if, if, if she's talking about one of her friends? We're talking about Shoma now. Really. No, what if this is something that is applicable to one of her friends and she just decides to Of course, that's a possibility. Yeah. But you know, yeah. when she started, she said, for someone who doesn't use social media a lot, and I think that's like a deliberate effort, so yeah. do, there needs you, to be an intention when you finally decide or like, to like, at least even something. communicate this better. Like, this what if, what if could have been avoided if she just articulated herself really mm. well as to what she was trying to say. It's so flimsy. It sounds like... Like, uh, I don't know, like gossip, like just this loose, exactly. loose, callous That's why I made reference combo. to a friend. It sounds like you're talking in the third party. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you're sure. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to react to it. If for somebody else who does, he did that already, maybe, but I guess it's be, like, like I said, it's because she doesn't really talk that much. So, Let me help you react. Okay. She said what she said. Don't wait for a man to come to his senses while you're losing your own. Chicken, now. Uh, do you want to now break that down? And it's yeah. also to a lot of ladies that have become Lord of the Rings as well, that they've just been waiting on one man that has just given them and they're just saying, oh, I'm engaged, I'm engaged, I'm engaged. And then it takes seven years, I'm still engaged. Wow. Eight years, seven I'm years still engaged. Yeah, yes, it happens. Not dating, it happens. Engaged, engaged, the ring in yeah. hand, in the finger. Yeah, it happens. Amazing. And then you're still waiting for the guy that's still telling you that, ah, you know, I need to make a certain amount of money. And you know this guy is clearly all right. Do you understand? Like, you can actually have a proper wedding and you leave 
an okay life, you understand, and you are still waiting for him Who needs a wedding? Go to Koyi, my friend. Like, what Zoom wedding, it? man. <laughs> like, right now is the best time to get married. Do Zoom wedding, do yeah. Skype weddings, whatever. Let people just see you tie the knot. That's all that matters, but we don't need to see you tie the knot. I, I, I want to be careful with that um, idea as well, because I don't think everyone who isn't like you know jumping the broom like tying the knot wants to some people just really want to wait some people and, and, and sometimes the, the conversation as well is very genderized like sometimes the woman is the one who's like a bit like let's just Laid give this a bit time a, a bit more time seven years because for as long actually. as you need to for as long as you need to and there's a lot of people that don't wow. have that like i'm running to marriage it's but more as about much as like, i agree with what you're saying now would you also agree when whoever is at the receiving end whether it's the man or the woman decides to say you know what let's end this relationship if you're not ready for marriage so i can move on to the next person of course if your values if your values are based Different. on that like you want to actually get married and then the person is stalling for reasons that are not justifiable to you of course but that's something that would have to be spoken about in terms of waiting though like in terms of this conversation i think there should be some type of patience in regards to that some people do need time um in terms of their personal conviction as individuals and then personal convictions in regards to the relationship and sometimes you just need to wait um, like how you did like this are you putting then, a relationship no then i'm trying to understand <laughs> because i was having this conversation there's this thing that after a guy proposes they say um that the wedding shouldn't be more than three to six months fact is that true? Except there are peculiar issues. Mm. And you know, maybe based on distance or there is a a, a, an, a degree the person wants to pursue and you are... There are of course, there are so valid reasons. But if there is no is issue... The actual, is the I mean, one year is limit. max. Is it That's enough? what I, I know. One year. Yeah. One so, year is max. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I, I, even in the Western world, like the advice I got after I got engaged was that one year you should be... Like, they want you to actually, there's a, there's a type of responsibility that comes with engagement, especially if you're the type of person that wears rings and things like that. As a woman, especially, mm -hmm. your life is very different. The way society accepts you is very different. They and automatically see you as taken. Yeah, and so there's, there's a different type of responsibility that comes more education on this, especially the time limit, know. because yeah. a lot of guys just feel like, oh, when I propose, it's, we're still, like, still uh, dating, uh, and okay. then it's just now to show they know. you my commitment. So I think there should be more education on this, because I was even sure if it was um six months or one i mean it's up to you it could be two days after but someone like, told me it's three months like three i don't months think there's a the time proposal. like time to it like if you want so it's to up to but between yeah. six months and one still okay then if there's not okay we need to move on to the next story i'm sure those that are serious have gotten the message <laughs> julius ibrahim writes open letter to her ex ex boyfriend Iceberg Slim issues 10 warning to him to stop trying to contact her. In the lengthy post she shared on Instagram, she said, and I quote, I made it clear to you when I left you that I had no I had no hard feelings against you and I wish you well as we both move on with our lives. Yet, even though I have blocked you from contacting me on various platforms, you still find ways to reach out or refer to me in posts on social media. End of quote. She went on to say, refrain from harassing my life with your narcissistic need for validation. Put a halt to all the emails pleading for my presence to discuss the past and do seek a professional therapist to help you overcome the trauma you're currently experiencing. End of quote. And like I said, this is from Judith Ibrahim, Ibrahim to Iceberg but Would it be mean if I said that I think I could say the same for Juliet? Like, I feel like Juliet only she trends... She's a therapy, right? No, she only trends when she's talking about relationships. Like, when she's talking about somebody who wants out, somebody who no, doesn't that, want that's her her like, that's, that's bloggers feeding on what they want to feed on. She I talks think, about a lot of things on her page. Uh, another thing that I was able mm -hmm. to pick from this uh, post was that after... At, at first, I was like, okay, because she started with a shade like two days ago when she said... Uh, it's so funny how your only claim to fame is claiming you date no is dating me do you understand like the fact that, that was iceberg first, yeah. but she didn't say it was iceberg but everybody just picked up on it because iceberg is not so famous in the if music she's scene. actually subbing iceberg then i'll say both of them are each other's claim to fame because so, when they both came into the relationship was when i started knowing um, Juliette Ibrahim and Iceberg. So, then, so I think the, the, also, the relationship gave them a level of um, popularity. Also, when she, um, while she's trying to win empathy from people or fans by saying that, okay, this guy is all over me and all that, she also gave this into bitterness by saying, Shebi, you said, nah, cheat, you cheat. No be person, you kill. Yeah, he so said she, that. Yeah, he actually said that, but it's actually looking Gross. like it's coming from a bitter place. Like, oh, so after what you did to me, you still went online and to say And you think that's, that's, not, that's not justifiable? Huh? 
Do you think that that's not justifiable? No, but she shouldn't have put it in the post because that way she would have gotten a lot of it, a lot of people's empathy. But right now it's more like, okay, so I'm just bitter about the fact that you said this. Ah, I'm just she gets my empathy for that reason, especially. There's, do you know how painful it is to be cheated on and be betrayed and lied and deceived? And then all of a sudden this person wants to come with his ego and telling you your, your story. Um, Love Love is Blind is another show that's like mm. working like And there's two characters like that, um, Diamond and... Carlton, if you don't know it, then just ignore what I just said. But I think that that's enough No, reason. but that's when you're being dragged. Like, this guy has been dragged. No, how would you come out years. to say, na cheat, I cheat, and no keep person, and still sending emails? Like, do you know how painful that is? Well, he wasn't directing it to her. He just said it. He just mm -hmm. said it. In, he was talking to his accusers. You just right? made that direct okay. that link. And now you're no, no, he didn't say it to her. I personally think both of them need to maybe be in one room think, for a day. Thank you. Not I like, think not like the whole day, like an hour and have a conversation. Yeah. Then they also both need to see a therapist and move on with their lives. And then she's saying she doesn't want to be his friend at all. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Jinx, right? That's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, will go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay home, stay safe, and have a fruitful Ramadan.